Could someone praise the Lord with me? Definitely the next meal we partake of with the Lord will be the marriage supper. Let us pray. Mighty God, in you we live, in you we move, and in you we have our being. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. As I stand before your people, I have to cleanse you. I ask God that you minister unto me. Minister, yes, Lord, to me and through me. Thank you for your word this morning. In Christ's name. Amen. Turn with me to the Gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 22. We went through a period of worship this morning. You know, oftentimes you see on the program praise and worship. This was worship. And what God requires is true worshipers. Amen? Yes. True worshipers. And what we do here is a practice. Because if you think when you get to heaven, you will walking around talking with your brethren. It will be worshiping. Amen? Amen. The gospel according to St. Luke 22. And I want to look at a couple of verses from verse 14. And it reads thus. When the hour has come, they sat down and the twelve disciples or twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. Then, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took also the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. It is communion morning. And oftentimes we come to communion, we expect certain aspects of approach and set up. But what I want to share with us this morning is understanding the Lord's Supper. The word or the words is used interchangeably. Communion, Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And the text that is before us directs us into an era of Christ leaving or knowing that he will go to the cross. But he wants to have a final meal with his apostles. And he no doubt get everything in place. And he said to them, this is what I'm going to do now. But hereafter, I'm not going to partake with you until the kingdom. And I was looking into this and I says, you know, this is deeper than it does take look right here. And I want to just do a little, what I call a teaching. When he speaks of the kingdom of God, he was looking at what? The end time, eh? Mm. He was looking at the yeah. end time. But the Passover is one that was practiced from when? Coming out of Egypt. And it was a once a year sort of activity, festival. And Christ had this Passover. And to tell us, it's two ordinances that Christ left with us. The first one is water baptism and the second holy communion. 
they won't forget that. So the Passover is something that should be practiced once a year by the Jews. Now, when you look at this and I say kingdom of God, and I said, this is deeper than this. And I was searching through and I remember that the Bible is broken down into seven dispensations. <coughs> the Bible is broken down into seven dispensations. And I want to share them with you. You might ask a question, what is dispensation? Here is A dispensation is a period of time during which man is tested in respect of obedience to some specific revelation of the will of God. This dispensation, we have seven. And each dispensation, the close of it, there is what we call remnants. You always find persons that believe God and going over into the next dispensation. And one thing I know now, God is not a fool. God set up, set up things for his purpose. Amen. When God started and set the world and said, Adam, I want you to look after this and I want you to tend to that. And when if man fall, he didn't catch God by surprise. I always tell you that the Bible theme of the Bible is what we call redemption. God started out and set plans to redeem man. What are the seven dispensations? The first one we look at is innocence. Genesis 1, 3 and 3 to 6. What is this about? It is a time when God had fellowship with man. God come in the cool of the day yes. and have fellowship with man. Mm -hmm. And we see that when Adam was in the garden. The second dispensation is what we call conscience. When man fall, God and uh, Adam realized that he was naked. Yep. And God says, as Pastor spoke last week, Adam, we are at thou. God wasn't asking Adam about his location. Because God knew every move. What God was saying is, what is your state? What is your condition in me? We had fellowship. Where it went wrong. The third dispensation is what we call civil government. You remember the story about the Tower of Babel? In Genesis 8, 15 to 11, verse 9. When everything was set up, a man wanted to build a tower to reach the heavens. And God went down and confused them. Eh? The fourth dispensation is what we call patriarchal rule. And that is found in Genesis 11 to 10 and Exodus 18 27. The fifth dispensation is what we call Mosaic law. Exodus 19 to John, St. John 14 and verse 30. When God established the law with his people. The sixth dispensation is what we call grace. Grace is seen from Acts 2 verse 1 to Revelation 19 verse 21. And might I say to us that we are in the dispensation of grace. If you don't know it, this is the penultimate dispensation. Amen. And the seventh dispensation is what we call kingdom age. The kingdom of God to come. Well, I have my suggest to us that in this seventh dispensation, there is no opportunity to accept Christ. Because this dispensation will not lead where God will come back to judge his people. So the opportunity for us to accept Christ is now in this dispensation. Oh, this fit here with understanding the Lord's Supper. He said he will not partake 
until the full, it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. In that dispensation, when we all sit at the table at the marriage supper with the Lamb, the opportunity for us to be sitting at that table is now. And if you do not know Christ as your personal Savior, yes. you won't be allowed to sit at that table. You won't be allowed to partake of that supper. Understand what God has established. God has sent His only begotten Son to die for you and me. It's for that reason why He has established the supper. Because He's calling back His people. I hear somebody say, All of you are God's children. No. We are all God's creation. But when you accept Christ as your personal Savior, then, and only then, you will become a child of God. The communion table is prepared for us this morning. And I ask myself the question, what is it for? Who is it for? The communion table is established for the child of God to have fellowship with God. And oftentimes tell you, Pastor, say, if something is preventing you from partaking, it will prevent you from entering to heaven. This morning, we are directed to partake of that communion table. Mm. We all have that opportunity today to partake of that communion. Because it's something that God wants us to do. He says, as often as you eat and drink, this thing, you do show remembrance eh, of my death, burial, and resurrection. <coughs> what will hinder you this morning from partaking? He says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My God, when we accept Him, Sister Dean, it's not a process line we go through where we set in our application and we await the results. The Bible says instantaneously. Once you accept Christ as your pure personal Savior, you become a child of God. That's right. You have your BA. Mm, You're born again. Right. And when you are born again, that qualifies you to sit at the table. Who is this for? This is for the child of God. I pray to God this morning that all will partake because it's the desire of the Lord Amen. to partake. Mm. Understanding the Lord's Supper. He said also, what is this for? It's for remembrance. Sometimes, when we remember things, we keep ourselves in check. Why is this prepared for us? We remember that God went to Calvary. We remember that Christ was bruised and wounded for our transgression. When we partake of that, we remember that he went to the cross for us. None of us, none of us could have saved ourselves. When God said to Adam, Adam, we are at thou? God Adam said, yes, I hear you was coming. 
and I eat myself because we were naked. Who tell you say you was naked? Did you eat? The woman blame game. But what Adam did, the Bible says that he cut a fig leaf and try to hide himself and set on himself and clothe himself. But you know, so when he chop down leaf, he drive by the angle of the road, eh? That's right. And what the Lord did, animal was killed. And he said, with all the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. God has established an institution, the Holy Communion. And He said to us, we should partake of that. I would not partake with you until the fulfillment of time. The opportunity for us this morning. But I want to know, are you qualified to sit at the table? It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It is just simply accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I don't want you to walk through the door and don't know Him. Because there's no guarantee for us. There's no guarantee for us for the next minute. I remember a brother in the New Testament, he says, I have a small barn. I'm going to hit it down. Build up a bigger barn. Yes. And I'm going to say to myself, so things is nice. I'm going to eat, drink. And be merry. So was required of him. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? I remember another brother, Sister D. He came all no doubt from his balcony and says, Is not this that I have done? And Nebuchadnezzar was mad for seven years eating grass like donkey. Don't leave Christ out of your life. Don't leave him out of your situation. The table is prepared for his children. And we are in the dispensation of grace. But as I can say to us, all fruits ripe. His appearance can be any time now. And then we are in the dispensation of the kingdom age with no repentance whatever state you are found now that is where you will face the judgment but the opportunity is here for us this morning that we can accept Christ as our personal sin and prepare your heart to sit at your table many persons accept Christ and communion is being served and they don't take it. And you might wonder why sometimes they say, no, because we just accept Christ. But the minute you accept Christ as your personal Savior, that is for you. Because your name, oh God, is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I know me write it. And our Reverend Marshall write it. And our Sister Dean write it. It's the Almighty. And you can't take that out. You know something struck me as I close. You know go ATM machine? Mm -hmm. yes. Anybody go ATM yeah, machine? Yeah. I was supposed to do. Yeah, when you take that, get that little paper, and you put it down for a couple of years, it fade out. You know That's that? right, true. Yes. It fade out. Yeah, you know, since you take any more to the long book of life, by your actions, by how you live, by your lifestyle, but as long as you walk with the Lord, as long as you walk with the Lord, 
the writing will be bright. That's right. Can't feel. Mm. Understand the Lord's Supper. It is for you. It is for you. It is for you. And what is it for? That when you partake, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. God bless you. Bless you. to stand up. The person who had your hand up, just stand. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you to do something else for me. Just come and stand 